Hey guys, this is Rob with the G-Body Garage. One of the things that I talk a lot about is sourcing parts and um, something I think may be really helpful for anybody who's trying to find parts, hard to find parts, discontinued parts, or whatever, um, is there's a website called GM Parts Wiki. And it, it's, it's not a great site as far as how it's presented or how easy it is to search. But if you spend a little time using that site and doing some searches, it can be, I mean, it can really be invaluable to you in finding the part you need and especially, you know, how it relates to interchangeability, right? So you all know that when GM put out a part, they typically would put that same part on a number of different cars. It wouldn't be on every car that was in the product line or, or a model year. But there would be several, you know, different models and makes that would carry the same part. So what I want to show you today is how to use this website called GM Parts Wiki um, to, to find the part, to discover the part number, and then to understand the interchangeability of that part as it relates to your car. So I've got it pulled up here on the interweb. And I'm going to pull, I'm going to uh, change the view here so that you can see this, the screen. I'm going to, I've, I've tried to make it big so that you could see the entire page. And what I did is this, this book, the single book, June 1991, Parts and Illustrations Catalog 32W. That catalog is specific to Oldsmobile. There's a catalog for, you know, the Monte Carlo. There's a catalog for Regal, you know, the, the Buick line. There's a catalog for the Pontiac line. There's a catalog for every single line. Even, I think I said Cadillac. So, um, so what we're looking for, and I just went through this with my car, was to find the uh, power actuator to pop the trunk. And, and I did find it at a junkyard. It took a little time. But one of the things I needed to do was to understand what, you know, what the part number was so that when I went to look for it, I knew that I was getting the right part. So when you pull up the GM Parts Wiki, what, I do, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this catalog because I know this catalog is for my car. Um, even though it's June 1991, it's still for my car, and I'll show you how I know that just in a second. And I do a search for a solenoid because that's what I'm looking for is a solenoid. Now you're going to see that GM, they do, they do a whole lot of, you know, um, shortening the names and that sort of thing of the words here. So you have to kind of use your brain just a little bit and sort through these part numbers and the descriptions to know if what you're looking at is what you're looking for. And I'm going through here. This is transmission related. This is transmission related. This is uh, accelerator pedal related. That's not going to be what I'm looking for. This is a pressure out, uh, altitude fuel limit. I'm not looking for that. Um, here, now wait a minute, here's a spring outside door solenoid. So wait a minute, am I getting close? Am I getting close to the part I'm looking for? Well, it says carburetor. Um, I'm going down, I'm looking through all of these, uh, these descriptions to see if what's here is what I'm looking for. Um, and so eventually I'm going to discover that there is a part for the trunk lock solenoid and it's gonna, and I, I happen to know the, the part number, but after sifting through all of this stuff, I finally discovered that my part is this part right here. This is compartment lid release. You see that? Compartment lid release. That's what I'm looking for. So when I click on this page, what I'm gonna see is a page from the Parts and Illustration Catalog that Wiki, that, uh, Wiki Parts has on their page. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about how to read this thing because it can be, you know, it can be a little, you know, challenging. So this this is the part we're looking for two zero zero five two eight four five, and what you're going to notice is on as this everything on this whole line applies to that part right there. So what we're looking at is this basically gives us our interchange. This tells us that it's going to be used on an eighty two and eighty three G. I'm sorry, that's the wrong line. 82 and 83 C and X body, electric compartment lid, an 82 through 87 G body, and that that is the RPO code, A90. So if I look on my trunk lid, on the label on my trunk lid, I should see an A90 on my trunk lid, and, and, and I will. And then 82 to 85 E body, 84 D body, 
an 82 to 84 X body. So though that right there is telling me what all of these, what, what all cars those, uh, that part was installed on. So if I go and find any one of these cars at a salvage yard and it came equipped with that A90 RPO code, I've found my part. So, so once you, once you find that, um, sorry about that. Once you find that, I've got another page pulled up here where I did a, a search for that part number. And so what you'll see is you'll see the, the old catalog. You're going to see the Buick catalog. You're going to see this may be a Chevrolet catalog. Uh, here's your Monte Carlo catalog. And it's going to pull up the page from that catalog where that part number is found. And, and basically, if we go into that catalog page, we ought to see the same thing. I mean, we ought to see the, the you know, the, the body styles that use that A90. Right here is an 82 through 88 G body right there and an 82 through 7, uh, 87 B body. Same part, 88 and 89 B body. So, so that's telling me that I can look on a GM B body car, I'm sorry, a Chevrolet B body car from basically from 82 to 89 or an 82 to 88 G body. And I sh if, I, if that part's present there, then I sh that part should fit my car because I've done the interchange. So you don't have to go out and spend a whole lot of money on, um, you know, on these interchange catalogs because they're available on the web. You, you just have to know sort of how to use them. Let me show you one other thing. I, I noticed a lock cylinder on here and the lock cylinder is tough because uh, I'll do a separate video on just on lock cylinders. I've got a, a lock cylinder from a Riviera, from a Monte Carlo and from uh, the Cutlass and none of them are the same. Um, so don't don't assume that just because it's a G-body car, or even though it may be two products within the, the Buick line or two products within the Oldsmobile line, that they're going to work from one car to the other. So, uh, and, and of course, this will tell this will help guide you in that sort of direction to know if if I pull a car from a Buick Regal, a door lock cylinder, you know the Paul. If I pull the Paul off the back of that lock cylinder. Is that Paul also used on my cutlass? The answer to that question is no, it's not. I don't think it is. Um, at, or at least I know it's not for a Monte Carlo. I know it's not for a Riviera. But the, the GM Parts Wiki will help you sort of narrow that search down. Uh, and not all these parts will have a part number stamped on it. That um, The uh, electric solenoid for the trunk lid, that part is actually stamped into the metal part of that you know part. So when you go find that part, you're going to see right on that part that it's stamped 2005-2845. Uh, the newer models actually are, they're either printed on the part or they'll have a label that the, the part number is printed on that label. Um, so if it's, you know, if the thing's gotten wet or been exposed to moisture, you may not know. I mean, you may not, uh, sometimes you have to take a chance on that stuff. But the older parts from, you know, like I said, for, you know, from before 1990, I'm guessing, a lot of those part numbers were stamped directly on the part. So there's no question about, you know, what it is that you're getting. So just a short video to kind of show you how to, you know, do some parts interchange, find your part for your car, so that when you go to the salvage yard and you pull a part, you're not taking a chance that what you're, that, you know, what you're buying is actually going to fit. The other thing I'll tell you about that lock solenoid is you're going you're gonna to get these parts cheaper at the salvage yard than you're going to get them anywhere else. The... Um, uh, I, I found the part on eBay, and on eBay the part sells for forty to fifty dollars. Sometimes with free shipping, sometimes with you know paid shipping. Uh, I bought the part, a, a functioning part that I hooked it to a battery and it popped. I know it's good, um, and so um, I got it for fifteen bucks. So, um, so anyhow, that's sort of the lesson on uh, parts interchange, searching for parts. Uh, if you got any questions or comments. You know, leave them below, um, and uh, if there's anything else I can do to help you sort of take some of the mystery out of this parts interchange, I'm happy to do it. So that's all for now. Thanks very much, and have a great day.